what's up guys in this podcast james and i discuss the elon musk deal the overall market and some current world events we also go over some steps to use real world events to identify setups in the current market conditions so stick around listen up because you're not going to want to miss this one what's going on guys we're back with another episode of the after hours podcast uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about Elon Musk, uh, who has been a pretty much a frequent in the news lately. Um, as of recently, he sold a colossal ton of Tesla shares um, while the stock has also been collapsing. Uh, and I kind of that's going to be the main main focus right now. So, Harry, you want to kind of lead us off into that? Uh, yeah. So, um, first of all, Elon Musk paid around. 44 billion for twitter um grossly grossly overpaid um you know and that was a controversy in itself because there were a lot of people on the left who were upset about kind of the censorship being gone and stuff like that and now that he's bought it he has been releasing daily uh these twitter files about what is going on behind the scenes there were uh reports that he was releasing that uh the biden administration was in contact with twitter um almost directly all the time censoring people's tweets um you know uh like if if they didn't like a tweet they would text you e- or not elon but they would text the ceos and people in twitter and say hey like this isn't good for us can you please remove it um so there have been a lot of controversies like that Um, As well as there was some stuff about Donald Trump um, and stuff like that and the banning of his account and ways that they did it and suspensions. Um, So, I mean, it is pretty crazy considering we had a sitting president in the White House at that time and people on the other side would text and say, can we get this removed? So it is a little bit nuts to me thinking, you know, when you hear about it now, you always kind of think, oh, well, Biden was in power, so it kind of makes sense that they would talk with these social media giants. But Trump was president at the time. So when you have a sitting president at the time and a different political party messaging a giant social media platform trying to get a sitting president out, that's where I think the the controversy has really come. And, you know, it, it it's really crazy because I'm just looking here, like Twitter has definitely struggled to maintain any steady profit you know they have 13 billion in debt um you know uh, it's just it's literally insane you know twitter had just 1.7 billion in debt but now it will be on the hook for 1.2 billion in interest payments each year so i mean there is a a lot of you know just like as far as business deals go this was a pretty bad one but i think you know yeah. He he's he's been in a situation and also I just want to talk about that um you know in in so in like near kind of August he sold 6.9 billion dollars worth of Tesla stock and now in November he sold another 3.95 billion and like a lot of people are saying like yeah it's put massive pressure on Tesla stock um and also another situation that in my opinion is pretty crazy is just the fact that um you know tesla is getting punished for this and you know he grossly overpaid and now we're kind of in this situation where he is pretty stuck just kind of due to like almost like a joke on twitter that ended up somehow becoming real it's like a twilight situation and this is kind of where we're at he's just selling tesla to kind of fund his business and one more thing is that what i read is that um in san francisco on their office uh they were a little bit behind on rent as well so you know as when those reports started to come out uh the tesla stock started selling and you know he just was on the hook to pay for a lot of stuff so yeah um it's crazy so so i have have a few things so i i think i think um the problem with the twitter acquisition was i think elon musk uh was kind of front uh, the front of the movement of this freedom of speech idea and ha- he loved twitter elon has always a platform for himself and if anything it's only benefited him and i think that he really liked the concept of this uh town square where people could come and that's what he calls it to 
to come to be, have have uh, intellectual conversations with one another. Yeah. And I think that he had intentions of potentially buying Twitter when he made the joke. I think that he realized quickly that I mean, listen, he's a smart guy. And when he made when he tweeted that, uh, he could have easily said like non gone through with an offer. Like he didn't have to make an actual offer just because he tweeted it. He doesn't have to do that, right? But it kind of sparked this whole thing, and I think it got his brain moving. I think he realized quickly that he did overpay for Twitter because I think at the same time, the war in Ukraine was kind of starting. And I think that he realized that the stock market was probably going to come down. Um, he probably could have paid like $10 billion or maybe $20 billion if he just waited a couple months. Yeah. And I think he's one of the smartest guys on the planet, and I think he knows that. Um, if you followed the, with Tesla for a long time, he has said for a very, very, very long time that, that Tesla was highly overvalued as a stock, right? He's yeah. always said it. Like when, te when Tesla was trading at $1,000 a share, like pre-split, like he was always saying like, we are highly overvalued, you know, and it's not a bad thing. He's just, they are a car company. Yeah. So I think the thing is like, I think Elon sees the playing field and I think he understands. Like, I don't really ever think he's making a move that he doesn't understand what's going to come next. I think he's boxed himself in a little bit here um, because yes, Twitter, he says it, Twitter has not been making money for a very long time. Right. But I almost feel like in this scenario, he has taken on the, the, the burden of like this company and like maybe losing money himself personally to turn it into something great. Yeah. Um, I would bet a large sum of money that Tesla will end up buying Twitter. Um, I That's honestly a, a theory that I really have. And um, I mean, Twitter is a private company now. And I think that's what's going to end up happening. Because yeah. I think I think in a whole, Elon has this giant idea of a company that will be sustainable energy cars, um, speech, you know, uh, able to connect with each other. Um, and all of that. So I, I do feel like he has a direction um, that he's going. I think it's a yeah. little confusing for guys like us to see the playing field because I, I've met guys who have worked with Elon Musk and they say that his brain works at a level that just we can't compute. Um, you know, and if you follow Elon in the past, yes, he's selling Tesla shares to pay for this. He's personally taking a massive wealth hit. And if you follow guys like Barry Ritholtz on Twitter, who is a very smart guy, but says the same thing, we're watching a guy blow up tons of his personal net worth, um, which might be the largest like slope of net worth on a single individual in history. That is not something that's uncommon to Elon Musk. He, When he sold his first company, he then used all of his profits to, to go into PayPal. When he sold all of, when he sold PayPal, he used all of those profits to go into solar city. I mean, um, I'm sorry, into, um, uh, SpaceX and SpaceX, Tesla yeah. and you know he's gone from being a wealthy man to a non-wealthy man on uh, you know overnight before and yeah. not saying that that will happen this time but he, when he goes into something he goes full force and full into it and if I'm going to bet my life on someone it's it's probably going to be Elon Musk to be honest yeah and I also think just from uh you know from a standpoint like that um you know there has been a lot of controversy uh you know, just just all over. Like I've never seen this much negative attention in a long time. You know, as far as business dealings go, you know, like this has been split. Now you have like Congress maybe trying to get him to testify. You know, because they're mad because you know he's more you know right wing, and uh, it, it's interesting because like I don't even know if he's necessarily right wing. Like, it seems like right wing nowadays is that you want free speech and that you want people to have different types of opinions and that, uh, you know, it just seems like that to me. Um, but I, I I do think like he's it's not going to be an easy one for him. And and what I think is is wild, too, is that, you know, the White House, like they don't even mention Tesla at all, like they say, oh, you know, there's GM has been making amazing strides in the electric car market, and they don't even come close to Tesla. 
you know yeah. and tesla's an american company like you should be bragging saying wow tesla's doing so great like we're selling these cars they're going all over the world like there's tesla's now probably in every city but instead they're like well gm's been making good strides like that doesn't really make sense to me you know despite you know, Elon Musk not liking you, it doesn't mean that you just completely ignore him. Like, I feel like that makes a situation a lot worse. Yeah, I, I think the problem is that, first of all, with these other car companies, there's never been an individual, uh, like, since someone like Henry Ford, who, like, actually ran his car company and was an icon and, like, face of a company. There hasn't really been someone like that in a very long time, especially connected to so much personal wealth. And I think the problem is that Elon Musk poses a threat to the two governments uh because he almost has attained a wealth level i mean he could have without this twitter acquisition he it almost was going to attain a wealth level of that of probably a trillionaire um which is ridiculous to even think about but that's probably the direction he was heading and at some point there are people that almost are richer than we're not richer monetary wise but like wealthier yeah. than governments in the fact that like he's so rich he could just leave and just yeah. do whatever and people trust him and I think that he poses a real threat to them with this Twitter thing because he's a lot, he basically is saying like, not even just government, it's a news too. Like he's almost saying like, you know, you don't have to watch Fox. You don't have to watch CNN. You come to this personal town, this uh, town square and, and you get accurate information that will be, you know, treated with uh, respect by each other and you can debate and you can have this, this, ha this is how it should be. So yeah. I don't think gov governments love that concept because- governments news sources a lot of them kind of run on the concept of fear and yeah. like news mongering and like all that fear mongering and like news just oversaturation and all that stuff so i think a lot of people don't like that and i think that you know it's funny when i talk to people who aren't too familiar with the with him and like his situation most people jump to saying like they don't like elon musk without yeah. actually understanding what he's doing yeah. um you know i mean like oh he was at the world cup in qatar you know, with the Saudis and like Jared Kushner and like all this stuff. And I think people jump to to all these crazy conclusions and all that stuff. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I am I personally am in the, in the band that I, I like him. You know, I if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I think he has good intention. I think yeah. he's really smart. And I think that all in all, like if you are a Tesla, Tesla shareholder uh, or SpaceX, like you like SpaceX, like, it, and you know, they're not private, like, public like that but you're you're believing in elon musk you're believing yeah. in the guy not the company so yeah. that, that's kind of my whole take on on his his positions on on his companies right now yeah no i mean same here i think that uh i'm definitely cheering him on and i definitely feel like the media has kind of been programming people like certainly like they did with trump where like with trump it was like orange man bad, you know, and now it's like Elon Musk bad, like, you know, so I definitely see the same pattern. Um, I just hope that he can kind of like get through it and manage it because, yeah. you know, I mean, to me, like, I know a lot of people have been like trashing Elon and stuff like that. But to me, I think, um, you know, it's, it's definitely important to, uh, yeah. to have someone like him, especially he's not he's more like moderate like he said he voted democrat like yep. for a long time yep. you know but he just can't anymore because he sees the way that the situation is going and like i think that's where a lot how a lot of us feel as well where it's like you know i can't vote in the states but you know i see you know two parties on either side very very extreme but you know you have to look like what's the lesser of the two evils you know like yep. long-term sustainability as far as spending goes, as far as, you know, management goes, as far as culture goes, you know, I'd definitely probably be leaning more towards Elon Musk than some of these other characters right now. Yeah, yeah dude. And, and like, now he's getting attacked by by senators, like I know Elizabeth Warren and him kind of had a little spat on Twitter. And he she basically was asking, like, have people been affected by, like, has have Tesla shareholders been affected by Elon Musk? in his uh, acquisition of Twitter. And, and the reality is like when, when he bought Twitter, right. I mean, the market was doing decently well. We hadn't really started this like massive collapse that we have yet. Like we obviously we were coming down, but it wasn't as drastic. So yeah. reality is like the stock market is coming down. There's not a single stock 
like a, in the S and P that is performing like incredibly well this year. So Tesla stock was coming down regardless. And then as a shareholder, you kind of had to know that his attention was going to shift. So you had ample opportunity to sell your stock, you had ample opportunity to get out. And again, same same thing. I I one of my largest holdings in my personal portfolio is Apple. Apple's gotten clobbered. Right. I mean, we're trading in the 130s right now. Like it, every single stock of every single high performing company has come down. So I can't stand this, like this narrative now that like things are getting affected. Yeah. I think Elon Musk probably has the biggest bandwidth of any single human being. So I don't think for a second he's allowing Tesla to run to the ground or anything like that. No. Um, and I just, again, I'll never understand it, man. I'll never understand the hatred towards, towards a guy who is, uh, building, you know, cars for sustainable energy, uh, and I mean, re- with renewable energy, uh, solar panels, uh, trying to get us to space, and cares about free speech. I mean, I, I, I just don't understand it. It drives me nuts. Again, I don't think any single person on this planet is perfect, and maybe you know he he is the richest guy in the world, and so maybe he's done some shit for profit. But you know what? At the end of the day, I don't see other people doing it, so it's easy to throw stones, right? But it just drives me nuts, man. It just further drives our what we always talk about it, with how people nowadays are just way too obsessed with like everything that they can't control and like people they hate and all this shit. Yeah. And it just drives me crazy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I also think Elon Musk definitely had a little bit to do with stock price coming down of Tesla, but um, you know, that's, that's just life. Like when you, when you sign a deal and you use Tesla as like collateral, as far like tesla stock is tied to a couple different things too number one they bought a shit ton of bitcoin i don't know if they still own that or not but you know for a while it was like bitcoin's going up so 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 is tesla and then now it's kind of tied to uh the overall market and as well you know elon musk is on the ask once in a while fucking absolutely hammering them so there's that which i mean like at the end of the day like when you own a stock and you own a lot of it, you have the right to sell it off, you know, or you, you know, despite you being in a company or not, it's not illegal to sell your stock. And also I'm sure he put Tesla running on autopilot, you know, the top yeah. engineers, the top people in America are working for that company right now. There's no way that that's not on autopilot. So I think for me, I just, you know, I really think that, you know, as far as the overall company goes, like not the stock price, it's fine. As far as the stock price goes, though, you know, it it's still pretty high. You know, like I mean, yes, it's trading at like a hundred or whatever dollars now, but it used to be at like a thousand. You know, pre-split. So yeah. this baby is pretty high. Yeah. No, I I I don't I don't know. I just. Like I said, we, we could go on for hours kind of on the, on the Elon Musk debate. I just, I think either you choose to believe in, in the man behind the machine or you don't, you know, yeah. and you know, you don't have, people don't have to stay on Twitter. I'm so tired of seeing the tweets that are like, I'm leaving Twitter. I'm leaving Twitter. Like you don't have to stay on Twitter and you don't have to pay the $8 a month or whatever to be a verified user. Like you don't have to do any of that, you know, yeah. but again, I do. I choose to believe it. I drive a yeah. Tesla. So I, I'm, I'm the same way. I, I like the guy. And, and I think that, sure, maybe he's in a corner right now, but I think I choose to believe he's going to box his way out of it. And I mean, that, what did the, uh, what did you think of the Twitter blue? Just real quick. Uh, Like the verification thing. Yeah. You know, I like the concept. Um, I mean, personally, I, I did pay for it, whatever it is. It's like eight bucks a month or something. Um, I think it's a little it's a little funny because it kind of just like anyone who was verified before it kind of just like takes away from that and like I think that um it's like it would almost be like if you went on Instagram and just made everyone verified like yeah. it would like it almost like ruins that that idea but at the same time I kind of like it it's because it's like we're getting rid of the bullshit right we're making sure that there's actual human beings behind the computer and not some bot I mean like Twitter got to the point where it it almost got obnoxious dude i would i would put out a tweet and just random people be like buy this this crypto you know i yeah, sell, sell monkey coin and i'm like the fuck are we talking like what happened and i yeah. like what he's doing with that concept i think it's it's very green i think it's very new and it, it has a lot that they have to do 
I think he's he's posing around ideas that only verified humans can actually place votes. Yeah. So like only people with Twitter blue can vote on the polls that he puts out. Like he is interesting because he puts out polls and he actually abides by them. Like he'll say like should like he had the whole doxing uh, issue, which is a whole nother thing that we skipped over. But the doxing issue with the guy tracking his jet and he's like, should I should I unsuspend this guy? They voted yes. And he's like, OK, he's unsuspended. Like I I. I like this concept. I like the ideas. Um, I do want to touch on that real quick. The fact, in my opinion, the fact that people were upset that he didn't like someone tracking his personal whereabouts where he has kids, children, all of that, I thought was ridiculous. I think it's insane. I think that if I was stalking a celebrity like Justin Bieber about his whereabouts with his wife, I think I would probably go to jail or be put on on a watch list. So I think it's ridiculous. He's not the president. He's not a world leader you know i just i think it was crazy dude that drove me absolutely insane yeah no and i think uh another thing that elon actually put out over the weekend i believe was he said should i step down from twitter and uh overwhelmingly people actually voted yes Yes. um which could have been a bot driven vote That, that that is the one thing it's a little a little suspect and that's why i think the concept came out of should uh only verified users be able to vote yeah no exactly. but he's, he will step down he did say once he finds a credible seat there's no ceo in their right mind wants to take over twitter right now or wants to work at uh at twitter they are they are a sinking ship it is he says it they have not been making money for a long time they're under immense scrutiny and so is he who the fuck is gonna take that job yeah you know? and, uh, no i'm just i'm just like looking at his twitter yeah. right now i just decided to like scroll through his feed because i'm like okay why not you know he's like should congress approve the 1.7 trillion yeah. anonymous spending bill 71 percent vote no and then he says i'm in favor of small a small spending bill to keep things running but common sense suggests that it should be the least amount required through the holidays yep railroading well, through a giant spending bill like that that almost no one has read is unlikely to be in the best interest of the people, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, it, a day it, ago, you if know, if you haven't read some of the details of the spending bill, read some of the key points on where the money's going. And as, as a country that I just came from, I was just in New, in New York city as a country dealing with crazy homelessness, uh, state people, personal savings of the middle class dwindling credit card usage starting to pile up. Uh, delinquency is starting to pile up. We're sending more money to foreign countries. We're sending more money to other people. And we're not helping ourselves. So the American people on Twitter spoke. They said, we don't want this. We don't want to keep spending money that truly we really don't have. But like Elon said, or, or, or like I forget who commented mm-hmm. on it. I actually think it was a, a QTR there. He's just like, they're not. no one's going to listen anyways. Like the American, it's, this, it's not really a democracy that way. Yeah, and like, uh, you know, we said, should I step down as head of Twitter? It was 57 to 43 votes, or 57% to 43%, and final votes was 17 mil. And then he said down below, I'll resign as CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. After that, I will just run software and server teams. And it's interesting because Mr. Beast also commented on that. He's like, if you keep doing stuff like this, yes. And it was basically like the promotion of Instagram, the promotion of Facebook, the promotion of all those other social media platforms that they released over the weekend as well. Those kind of terms of service and violations of the policy. So to me, it was quite interesting how, you know, different people all over have been kind of weighing in on this and saying, well, if you're going to do stuff like this, you know, you should step down. And if you're going to kind of, uh, you know, keep trucking along on this kind of path, you should do this or that. So to me, it's very interesting that you have someone like Mr. Beast as well weighing in on this, you know, who wasn't necessarily too, too active on Twitter before Elon Musk took over. He now seems to kind of be trying to come up with ideas and stuff like that. So to me, it's interesting. Dude, I I feel like some people, too, and if you've never run a business, big or small, I don't think a lot of people have as much of an understanding. Um, Like I run a small business and. Do you know every single day, every single day, pretty much in the last 10 years that I've had it, someone gives me, someone's like, oh, you guys should do this. You should do this. This is what you should do. Okay. It is really easy from the outside 
to say this is what you should do. Yeah. But when you're, when you're the decision maker and you're looking at the realist the realisticness, or you know you're just trying to get, sift through your own ideas in your own head, yeah. it's it's really hard. It is really hard to do that. So Elon Musk, a single man entity person, is taking the ideas and getting ideas by the droves. Millions of people are tweeting at him every day. Do this. Do this. Do this. You know how fucking hard that is. Like, and you know what? Some ideas. I have ideas all the time that I implement in my business yeah. and sometimes they flop. Yeah. Sometimes it's not a great idea. Like I don't necessarily agree with his idea on the terms of usage and with the whole, uh, you can't promote your Instagram or anything like that. I mean, I don't have any reason to do that, but I know businesses that operate there, link trees, all that. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree. And you know what? I think that idea will probably be backtracked or revised or edited, but it is really hard every single day to make a decision and have them hit 100% of the time. I've had a million ideas that have flopped and I'll have a million more. Yeah. So this 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 attack on everything he says in tweets to me is ridiculous. Again, it's a town square. It's where you, <clears throat> you give ideas and you talk about it, but yeah. he's not going to be perfect. No, no, I completely agree. Um, maybe uh, we can transition to kind of like the overall market and what's kind of been yep. going on there because that has also been kind of a bigger story. Yeah. Um, we had Spy try and break 400. Well, it did for a little bit. Um, and then, uh, you know, we've kind of pivoted back down. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? I'll, I'll say what I think, but. Sure. But um, I, I think we're going to head a, a lot lower. Um, I mean, I, again, we've, I've said this in the past. I think some, some stocks have bottomed. Um, and I think that there's a few that will hold, but I do think the, uh, at least spy and everything, like I'm getting this, this feeling we're going lower. Um, people keep saying, and I have noticed in the past, same thing, right? The VIX has really yet to spike. Um, I think that the VIX has yet to spike because nothing has happened that we're not understanding. There's there's nothing that's going to – that we're we're not getting scared by anything. Like the VIX yeah. usually spikes when something colossal happens, which we talked about in the last podcast. When something finally breaks, I think we'll see the VIX spike, um, you know, like a, a crazy company like an Enron or, you know, a crazy company – going belly up or something like that. That's that's max fear and max pain. Then we'll see it. But yeah. until then, I think we're going to slow bleed. And I think it's going to get worse into 23 when we really, I mean, it's. It, I think it's foolish to admit that we're not in a, a deep recession and it's not going to continue. I think when the numbers come out from the holidays on spending, I think they're going to be incredibly low. I think um, revenues are going to miss. I think earnings are going to miss. On a lot of the major companies, again, we've talked, we have guys like Jeff Bezos saying, don't buy a fucking TV right now. Yeah. Keep your money. Don't do this. Don't do that. Uh, Elon Musk is tweeting, you know, if the if uh, the Federal Reserve keeps raising rates, we're going to go into a really harsh recession, if not worse, a depression. Um, so I, I really think that's what's kind of down the pipe in uh, 23. Yeah, for me, I, I also agree with you. I definitely see it going a lot lower. Could you imagine though the company that goes belly up is Tesla and Twitter? Oh, oh David, I, I, would, I would delete everything. I oh have my god, I bro! <laughs> I just it's just funny. It's not out of this world. Alex, so Alex and I were at, at uh, lunch on over on Saturday. We said that we we're like, what if it's fucking Elon Musk that breaks? Like, what yeah. if, I would cry, dude. I would I would cry. Yeah, what if that's where that they try and squeeze him out and they try and fuck him and they they keep trying, you know? Um. Also, that was just something that came to my head because you were like, one company that's gonna break. I'm like, shit, we're doing an entire podcast on Elon Musk and Tesla. Yeah. We'll <laughs> delete the podcast. Company. <laughs> we're gonna delete this podcast if he goes bankrupt. Yeah, hopefully I'll we don't perfect. speak it into existence. I'll but, be living yeah. in my car. <laughs> yeah, I think that for me, I think the Fed is going to keep going till they can't go anymore. Uh, like you say all the time, I think every podcast, like Jerome Powell does not want to be the Fed who lost to inflation. So when ego gets in the way um, ahead of kind of facts and stuff like that, the thing is, is that like if you want to raise rates, you should have done it in COVID, you know, like just the way they went about things is completely wrong. Like if you're a Fed and you're making policy, your policies are not going to come into effect right away like you're not going to be able to see yeah. data from your policies coming in right away so you know you do something it it's not going to be shown for three or four months you know you're not yeah. going to see how good or how bad what you've done is for three to four months and in covid we had 
you know, record high inflation. We had housing prices through the roof. We had all these things, consumer spending way, way, way up. Like all those things are not even close to what was being fed to us, considering it was being fed to us that, oh, we're in a depression. I know times are tough. I know things are hard right now. When that seems to me to be like a small minority of people, like when I talk to people about COVID, the only people that were really, really struggling were people like you who are boxed out by these restrictions. Like you couldn't cut hair. Like how the hell were you supposed to be able to manage and work and pay your rent and do shit like that? Because you were boxed out by those restrictions. So the only people who were really suffering were the people who the government chose to suffer, you know? So I think that's one thing that's important because the majority of people like teachers could work for home. Uh, Nurses, definitely, they have to go to the hospital, obviously. But, you know, a firefighter, like they're not doing things virtually, you know, they're going out and they're, they're earning a living. So there are a lot of people who were still working, like the world still ran, it just either ran from home, or, you know, it, it ran from people coming in, or you weren't working at all, because the government restricted you out, you know, so they printed all this money, drove inflation through the roof. And, you know, it's so funny, because you look at the people in Canada and the people in the United States, and they're saying, oh, well, we're not going to raise rates till 2023. Well, they've already started, you know, at the yep. end of 2022. You know, I really do think that, you know, it's probably orchestrated. Like, there's no way that they don't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. Okay. And to me, it's just, uh, you know, I I just, I just shake my yep. head at it because it's like, you guys look like idiots right now because, yep. you know, to me, what's done is done. Like, Food prices will not even come close to coming down until the diesel price starts to come down, you know, because those trucks that we get our food on rely on diesel. So if there's any hope in food prices coming down, it's not going to be whether the Fed raises rates or not or whether people can buy it. It is going to be the simple fact that the world runs on diesel right now. And right now the price of gas is coming down. So, yes, that helps, you know, overall people like you and me who drive cars. But the price of diesel is still very sky high. And last thing I checked, our friggin' food and our carrots and our whatever is not being delivered to us on a goddamn Tesla. It's being delivered to us on a diesel truck. Yeah. So yeah. that's something well, to also look at as well. And I also think they're just going to keep raising, keep raising, keep raising. And the thing that breaks could be that people can't pay their mortgages anymore. Like I got an offer. Um, I don't I, like I don't have a mortgage right now, but I got an offer. And it came up on my phone and it said, hey, we're locking people in at, you know, a 5% rate in Canada. It's like, yep. we're looking to lock you in at a, on a fixed rate, 5%, and we'll pay you $1,000 for it. What? And so immediately people think when the bank pays you $1,000, oh man, it's a scam. Oh man, it's a scam. But then I was kind of doing some more digging, at least here in Canada. The banks are hurting so bad right now that I think that if they raise rates too, too much because like the, the level of debt in Canada is insane, just as it is in the States. Yeah. But, you know, America is kind of like land of the free. Like you can go out, you can get a job. Really, you can like if you work hard enough, you can really get a job like, you know, definitely easier than Canada. I'll say it's definitely easier than Canada. You guys have more people, more companies, more things to yeah. do. Um, Canada is a little bit different where it's like, it, it's not the most easiest because if you live in a small town, even for a Burger King, sometimes it's competitive, although not right now. Um, but yeah, I think I think that the bank in Canada is paying people that thousand dollars to lock it in because they know that rates are going to go way fucking higher. You know, yeah. I saw a bunch of people on TikTok come out and say, oh, they know that the rates are going to go back down and they're trying to scam people and they have the best interest of the bank. Sometimes the best interest of the bank is saying, please lock in this goddamn rate because if the housing rates go higher, you will not be able to, like, afford your mortgage. Like, we're fucking bribing you so that you don't lose your house, you dumbass. Dude, in in America, there's, um, so there's the first-time homebuyers program here, and and I've heard that there are some companies offering, um, seven-year arms. So, like, basically, like, if you're a first-time homebuyer, they'll lock you in at, uh, like, three and a half percent right now. But on the flip side, after seven years, it can go up 2% a year for X amount of years or whatever it is. But obviously at that point, the the hope is that you'd refinance and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people say, why the hell would they do that? Why the hell would they do that? And it's just what you said. They want to guarantee 
cash flow and money coming in. It's just the same reason why American Express has like the highest cash balance they've ever had because they're they want to save against delinquencies. They need to protect themselves. Everyone needs money. The world operates on money. So they have to protect themselves. And the in the last thing I want to say kind of on this whole subject is the Federal Reserve has a mandate on inflation. It's two, you know, two percent. And you know, I think it's I think it's fool's gold to think that we're going to get interest rates under five percent and hold them there for a long time. So I really think that we're just headed for I I don't want to say I think it's going to be like a stagflation uh, era. And I think yeah. that's kind of what's coming for us. Yeah, no, I definitely I definitely think so. And, you know, I think things are going to be sideways for a while. And, uh, you know, that's just where we're going to be at. I think although it, I do think the sideways is coming. You know, when I talk to normal people, the thing is, is that they're always saying to me, oh, well, it's going to go back up. Oh, well, it's going to go back up. My neighbor called me in October. She said, Harry, what do you think the market's going to do? Because she knows like I trade and like she knows that like I like do a full time. So she was saying, what do you think the market's going to do? And I was like, to be honest, I think it's going to go a little lower. And she's like, well, shit, I can't retire then, you know, <laughs> but it's like what what can you do you know like i think we're definitely gonna go lower and like normal people when i talk to them all the time oh it's gonna go back up don't even worry don't even worry like people are not scared enough right now to like there's been no real like liquidation move you know we're still trading above like the covid kind of highs like there's no really fear to kind of liquidate like in 2020 when we got that big bounce a big part of it was number one the fed a big part of it was two a ton of people liquidated and uh they were able to kind of run and like right now like during covid it was more so like oh well it has to crash it has to crash it has to crash when you get like longs like who don't want to trade and you get shorts who are very very confident those are always going to be the best long trades yeah 100 all the time because shorts are overconfident they're willing to keep going and going going back to more now we're in a situation where the fed is not on your side we have longs who are complacent we have you know honestly to me it's like a long and short battle we have i've heard the bear case and the the bull case 100 times over from both sides both people yeah. so to me you know i i i personally think that we're definitely in for lower just the sheer fact of there's no one scared oh it's gonna do this oh it's gonna do that. i don't know i don't know. you know like yeah people okay. people just think that it's gonna go back up magically without you know any real knowledge of of what's going on because they saw what happened in covid and they're like oh this is definitely going to happen again covid's over this that and the other thing so to me i think that we're in for a lot lower and i'd love to see it you know i'd love yep. to see I'd, I'd just love to see it because that's kind of what we need right now agreed and i, I mean i think we should wrap it up here but yeah you know we we really are we're we're in a crazy time man and you know we'll continue to kind of monitor and, and talk about it every week and and same yep. as always guys if there's any topics you'd love to hear about uh, please let us know in the comments yeah, sure. and, and yeah, please. And thank you for listening. All right. Perfect. Thanks guys.